Let's talk some sports, baby. Goodbye, Iguodala. Iguodala to Curry. Back to Iguodala. Up for the layup. Oh, blocked by Curry. And remember, make tomorrow better than today, and make today better than yesterday. And you know what we're going to do. We're going to holler at you until next time, baby. All right, we now turn to a story which dovetails off the senseless murder of George Floyd. Saints quarterback Drew Brees received heavy criticism after comments he made Wednesday relating to the American flag and the national anthem kneeling, which started with Colin Kaepernick. Brees apologized yesterday, but that hasn't done much to calm the storm after his initial comments. All right, Cody, let's take a crack at this. What are your thoughts on the reaction to what Drew Brees said? Yeah, it's, it's hard not to talk about this one. It's been quite a big deal in the last day or two. Um, you know, I think what's going on with, with Breeze is a symptom of, of a larger problem we have in the country right now, which there seems to be little to no tolerance on either and all sides. I'm not criticizing protesters or anti-protest, whatever the case may be. Uh, there, there seems to be little room for any sort of complexities or gray area or acceptance of the idea that could be more than one right answer to a problem. Uh, Drew Brees is also the victim of a current climate that operates often by a social mob rule where if you don't fall lockstep with the correct opinion totally and wholeheartedly, uh, then you're just gobbled up and spit out. It's something we've seen for uh, quite a many years now in this country. And, you know, when you look at Brees' original comments and the subsequent follow-ups where he further clarified his position, he was really, the, the whole controversy stems from a very small part of his larger argument. You know, in the argument which he basically uh, completely agreed that he realizes the country doesn't always work for everyone, that minorities are often unfairly targeted and treated by police, and that we still have a very long way to go to get to the vision that the Founding Fathers intended when they originally wrote the documents that this country system is founded off of. But he also acknowledged that, hey, millions of people have fought and many have died for, this, for the idea of true equality and liberty. Some did it on the battlefield, million and others, like his, like his grandfathers, for example, and then others, you know, have done it here in the streets at home, this women's suffrage, civil rights movement, etc. Uh, he sees all their struggles, and when a deliberate protest is done during the anthem, he sees it as a disrespect towards their struggles. And to me, that's kind of the crux of all of this. There, there's no, to me, there's no correct interpretation of the flag, the anthem, or the protest. You know, some folks are going to look at the flag here in the anthem, and they're going to think of all the injustices that their family has suffered at the hands of a system that often doesn't seem to care about them. Other folks like Breeze, you know, they're going to look at it and they're going to look at the positives of this 300 plus year old experiment and say, hey, we can still do better. You know, Kaepernick, for better or for worse, uh, you're not ever going to be able to totally shake the opinion of many people that his protests were somehow linked to the, the country, the military, and just as a whole you know, sort of the baby with the bathwater analogy. You know, he didn't kneel at halftime. He didn't kneel before the kickoff. He specifically targeted the national anthem. That's always going to be inextricable to some people. To me, neither side is completely right or wrong because to me, it's only the symbol of what you make it out to be. Now, was Breeze's comments pretty tone deaf for the moment? Yeah, there was no reason he couldn't have just made some boilerplate stock off the shelf answer and just unrolled a script and read it and said, hey, good luck, everybody, and rolled on. You know, there was, was it really the time to kind of, to kind of bring, bring this back up or beat the horse some more? No, but the character assassination he suffered now, it's ludicrous. I mean, the man helped rebuild the city after Hurricane Katrina, one of the worst natural disasters in U.S. history. He's been an ambassador of the city and the region. He's donated tens of millions of dollars, volunteered countless hours of time to a community that is majority minority compromised. And no one has ever thought of Drew Brees having a single racist bone in his body until this week. But then suddenly, because he agree, disagrees with a slight interpretation of a part of an argument, that he still largely sides with the, the, the fo- those who want change. You know, he's simply now a terrible person. He, he, were, he needs to be canceled. He needs to retire. He needs to be thrown out of his official announcing job. Nothing else matters. So I, I don't I don't like the the ridiculous backlash he's gotten. I can understand why people might be upset. Um, but the, the level that's been taken to it is quite insane. I think for all the talk of unity right now, it's really easy to do the opposite. And Breeze is an example of that on both sides. You know, those who are demonizing him and then him stirring the fire for no reason so i think we can and we we should do better than this to me the real sad thing 
about this whole situation that started with, again, the senseless death of George Floyd is that so, mi- so much of this, so much of the issues and what occurred and what has occurred afterwards, so much of this we can all agree on if you have any amount of human decency running through your body. Mm-hmm. Number one, the death of George Floyd was wrong. It was horrific. It shouldn't have happened. Uh, number two, uh, we've seen uh, instances, too many of them, where it appears minorities are treated differently and worse by the police. We've seen that on far too many occasions. Uh, number three, police officers that conduct themselves in, th- in such a way should be held accountable. No matter, no matter, and that doesn't matter what the race is. And number four, this is an issue that should be protested. No problem with protests. So much of that, so much of that, we can, I think we can all agree on, again, if we can operate under the premise that we all have some sort of human decency about us. The problem, the problem that we have now, and you mentioned it a little bit, and I, I, the word nuance really comes to mind here because the conversation once you once protests become riots and i think there and there has to be a distinction there has to be a distinction between protesting and rioting because what we've seen transpire the past week in just cities starting with minneapolis and once it happened in minneapolis it seemed to spread like wildfire once the riots start and you have just utter chaos people just running into breaking in to businesses, breaking into stores, and just running out stealing, stealing things. And then we have you have when you when you it's one thing to be out there protesting, but when you have people throwing projectiles at police officers, whether it be water bottles, whether it be bricks, whatever the case may be, we crossed the we crossed the line, and we're the society is disintegrating into anarchy. That's where we're headed right now. And I can and I can I can assure you that is not a place we want to go. In the case of Drew Brees, Drew Brees said what he said initially, and you're you, you're 100% correct when you talk about being tone deaf. I would use the words when you appear to have a lack of awareness. That's what I, that's how I would uh, that's how I would put it. But again, when you talk about the First Amendment and you talk about free speech. You hear, you hear the phrase, right to your opinion, a lot. But in cases like these, it doesn't appear to be that way. Drew Brees said what he said. And whether you agree or disagree, I didn't find nothing offensive about it. I really didn't. But again, that's where we, that's where we head into this um, offensive-oriented culture where it all, it all depends on the reaction that people have to it. And some people fa- – and some people – Many of them found his comments offensive. But on the flip side of that, when you talk, when you go back to Colin Kaepernick, and we know, we know why Colin Kaepernick protested. It was because he was protesting police brutality. But then again, you can also flip the script on that as much as we talk about the reaction in the offense to Drew Brees' comments. When you protest during that time, you, you, offend, you offend patriots. You know what I'm saying? You offend people that have a high degree of respect for their country. And when you protest during the national anthem, people are going to feel some type of way about it. And let's be honest, and I've thought this many a times, even though I understand that that's, that is a perfect time to get attention for the issues you're hoping to correct and have and bring about change and make progress on. But you know as well as I do, there's such a thing as press conferences. Players, players have press conferences after games, quarterbacks especially. Um, Colin Kaepernick at any time throughout his career, and, I, and again, uh, when he started kneeling, it's not like pr- police bro- t- brutality had just started, and we've seen instances of unarmed black men um, being killed and being, being murdered. We'd seen these before. Never heard from him in a press conference. At any time, he could have said, hey, hey guys, talking to the reporters, we're not going to talk football right now. I, w- I want to bring attention um, to, another, to another issue. He had opportunities to do that. 
He chose to go a different route, which is perfectly within his right. At the end of the day, when you talk about Colin Kaepernick protesting, every, he's got every right to do so. And, and on the flip side, I believe anyone, if you don't agree, you should have that right to not agree with the method in, w- in which he went about it. I think that's perfectly reasonable. The problem that we, we're getting into now, and you also touched on it, is the mob culture. If you, if you, if you are not 100% on board with what the, the mob and, or the movement, however you want to call it, if you don't, if you don't fully 100% hop on that bandwagon, you risk being run over. And that's what happened to Drew Brees. The, the level, the backlash and the response to him, it's unfortunate because, and to, and to have it come from teammates who know this man, Michael Thomas, Malcolm Jenkins has been a teammate of Drew Brees before he left for Philadelphia. Now he's back with the Saints. The list goes on and on. Um, I agree with you. Of course, we don't know Drew Brees from a can of paint, but by all accounts, he seems like he's class personified. And when you talk about uh, after post-Hurricane Katrina, um, Drew Brees, to me, is a, like, kind of a symbolic figure of the, of the rebirth of that city. Uh, we talk about football, sports being a microcosm of society. Drew Brees in New Orleans right now, uh, to me, they go hand in hand. And it is an absolute shame to see what has happened to him and then just the negative. I mean, you've got people... You've got crowds in New Orleans marching saying, F Drew Brees. It's unfortunate. And he, and he apologized yesterday, and it didn't seem like it helped all that much. So, and we talk again, we go back to free speech. It seems like free speech now is only selectively applied. And in a lot of cases, if you don't 100% agree with what the majority at the time uh, uh, is feeling or saying, you may as well not say anything at all. That's what it comes down to. That's why these topics are so risky and they're so complex. And I would, I would honestly just like to know, I would honestly like to know what, what can I do to help? You know, what can I do to help prevent police brutality? I really would like to know. Um, and I haven't discussed this with, with our counterpart, Drink. I haven't really, I have not, I gotta be honest, I haven't broached this conversation with him yet. Uh, I don't know how he's feeling. Um, I've, I've hinted, we talked about this a couple weeks ago, approaching this segment. Um, and full disclosure, he didn't want to go there. And with that in mind, uh, I respected his opinion and we didn't go there. Um, but when it, when it got into the Drew Brees situation, I felt like, since it was more, it had a more sports feel to it. That's why I wanted to address it today. But again, bottom line, what we saw in Minneapolis, we should not have seen. Inexcusable, horrible. And again, I think we can all agree on that. But there are nuances of this that I think it's okay. And I think it's perfectly reasonable for there to be disagreement. But there has to be discussion. There has to be discussion. The pro- a, lot of, a lot of the problems that we're coming about today is people want to be completely closed-minded and they don't want to listen to anybody that disagrees with them. Yeah, that, that nuance is like the key of all this. I think like, like you're talking about is, is I think there's a, instead of a black or a white, a one or a zero with these arguments of like Drew Brees, for example, is either Drew Brees is either a terrible racist or he's perfect, you know, where in essence there's this huge middle ground where everyone pretty much hangs out of, you know, like I said, we all, we all pretty much agree. Like you just said, you're four points. I don't think hardly anyone would disagree. And if they do, then well, I'm, I'm, you can't help them. Like this is what it is. But you know, when you start, you start getting into these details where these tiny little miss, you know, little arguments can just completely throw someone to the side. It's, it's ridiculous. Like you said, how can you have a conversation, a real conversation about change, not just, you know, coming off with random boilerplate Twitter speak, like how can you actually talk about a subject that's difficult like this when something as small as what he said can make someone a social pariah for the rest of their time. That That's just, it's, it's insane. So how that, he yeah. preach unity and, and change and conversation, but then as soon as Drew Brees says something you don't like, you you crap on him from a hot air balloon. I, I just I don't I, I don't get how that's. And that's we have yeah, to be able to talk about these things to go forward. Yeah, and and a yeah a couple more things, the generalizations that we see 
generalizations, they're not good. When we talk about the, pushing the narrative that every cop is like that cop in Minnesota, Derek Chavin or whatever mm-hmm. his na- whatever his name was, we we know we know we should know that's not tr- we should know that's not true. Uh, coming from a personal perspective, my father was a deputy sheriff for ten years in uh, in my hometown of Virginia. Um, that that's my father. Uh, my father always treated everybody with res- respect. Um, I know I know this for a fact, and good good man. And you know, just based off what I learned from him, and again, I and I went b- back to the question I posed earlier that we can't get an answer r- right now about what can I do. You know, I go about the business, and I'm sure you do as well. We go back a long way of going about my business, and everybody I come in contact with, treating everybody with respect. That that's that's I think that's at the end of the day, that's all we can ask for. We know everyone does not live like that, and it's a shame that they don't. But from a personal perspective and a personal responsibility, that is what I go about the business of doing is treating everybody the same and treating everybody with respect. And then last point, going back to the issue of rioting and protesting and that line. The behavior of people that cross the line and Obviously, I, 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 the majority are probably are peacefully protesting. But again, just like one bad cop can ruin it for everybody, a couple agitators here and there, they hijack, the, and, and the attorney general has used this verbiage as well, they hijack the, ne- the, uh, the real issue. And we've seen it. As soon as those riots started, you started hearing the name George Floyd less and less. You started hearing the phrase police brutality less and less because the story was now the rioting and the burning d- and the and communities burning, literally burning down. I remember the first night in Minneapolis when that target was getting looted and later in the evening, an auto zone burned down. Think about all the businesses in these communities that have been torched. It's just, and these communities with, again, with so many minorities living in them, now they got to go go about the business of trying to rebuild. And if you and if you listen to anything that's going on, because we've we've had these type of riots happen before, it takes years, years for these communities to get back on their feet. And again, the behavior is bad enough. It's egregious. What is even worse is people of influence living in, in their privileged lifestyles, because there are plenty of minorities out there that have that have made successes of themselves and ma- made it good. But it's a shame that those people, almost it seems like they're encouraging that behavior. So now you reinforce the rioter, the rioting and the looting, and people now legit thinks it's okay. If you saw certain people of influence and prominence come out and say, this is not okay, we'd see less of this. It could have been stopped sooner. And oh, by the way, la- last point that I have. Mm-hmm. It's a shame. George Floyd's brother, I've seen him quite a few times, and he has pleaded every time I've heard him, stop the violence. I don't know why people aren't listening. It's a shame his voice is not reverberating and being amplified because this this instance of police brutality started with his brother, and it's a shame people are not listening to him. Yep, very sad situations. Hope, hope everybody can get through it.